Good evening. Hi everyone. Tonight we are so thrilled to release a brand new series on our YouTube channel entitled Online Originals. Online Originals will be a new digital series where we will bring you brand new recordings of performances that will premiere right here on YouTube. Our first four episodes of Online Originals are called Beethoven Express. And we invite you to hop aboard and travel with us in these episodes as we make an international set of stops to visit artists and composers from around the globe. Each episode pays tribute to Beethoven alongside new music from some inspiring composers. So where do we begin the Beethoven Express? Right here in Milwaukee with one of my very favorite ensembles, the Lee Trio. The Lee Trio is comprised of myself and my two sisters, Angela Lee and Lisa Lee, and we were very fortunate to find a safe way to come together and make some music for you all. It was such a treat to fill the home with music again and to enjoy that sacred time with family and our chickens. We're so grateful to have the chance to share that with you now as well. Tonight's episode begins with Beethoven's piano trio, Opus 1, Number 1. As the first stop on the Beethoven Express, we thought it would be fitting to begin with his very first catalogued work. And of all the configurations he could have written for, symphony, string quartet, solo piano, he chose the piano trio, a nod to the powerful sonority of these three instruments together, as well as the collaborative spirit that three is better than one. And so we hope that you will enjoy this beginning of the Beethoven journey at the end of the Beethoven 250th anniversary year, ending in his actual birthday on December 17th. Here is Beethoven's Piano Trio, Opus 1, Number 1. Thank you. 
And now we are so thrilled to present a piece written by British composer Edmund Finnis. We were so pleased to receive the score for Edmund's new trio and were immediately taken by his piece. One of the last tours that the trio made before the pandemic hit was to Germany in February of this year. And we were honored to give Edmund's trio its German premiere at the Beethoven House in Bonn. It was and is for us a piece that brings us into a place of wonder and repose. Here's a message now from Edmund himself. Enjoy. Hello, I'm Edmund Finnis. I'm the composer of five trios, which you're about to hear. And I'm speaking to you from my home here in Oxford in the UK. As a composer, I write for quite a wide variety of contexts, ranging from intimate solo pieces through to works for full orchestra, film music and electronic music. Though in recent years, I've developed a particular fondness for writing chamber music for small groups of instruments. And I'm absolutely delighted that the Lee Trio have recorded this performance of my five trios. Each of the five short movements of this piece explore different ways that the beautiful colours of these instruments can be interwoven to create delicate fabrics of sound. Each movement plays with just one or two musical ideas in a very focused way. And with this music, I'm trying to make something that draws the listener in towards the particular nature and character of these instruments and towards the patterns that their combinations make. I grew up playing the cello and played in a piano trio a lot when I was a teenager, so I love this combination of instruments and it's something that feels close to my heart. I'm currently working on a, a new piece for piano trio, my second, and it's been commissioned by the Lee Trio and they will premiere it next year alongside Beethoven's Archduke Trio. So I'm looking forward to that project very much. But in the meantime, it's an absolute pleasure to have my music featured again in the Chelsea Music Festival and to be able to work again, albeit distantly, with these wonderful musicians. I hope that you enjoy five trios. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Edmund, for that wonderful piece. Also on that trip earlier this year, my sisters and I traveled to Hamburg, where we had the chance to meet German artist Jared Batz and visit him in his studio. He had been working on sculptural reliefs of Beethoven, and we were fascinated by his process. It was such an exciting studio visit that Melinda and I knew we wanted to find a way to share his work with our audiences. And so now, enjoy a look into his studio in Hamburg and hear about his fascination with Beethoven. After that, we will stay in Hamburg, at least musically, as the lead trio plays the lullaby movement from the Opus 101 Trio in C minor, written by another Hamburg native, Johannes Brahms. My name is Jared Bartz, I'm a sculptor and I work on oversized objects like heads, portraits and commissioned works. About one year ago I started a series of busts and relics of Beethoven on the occasion of the Beethoven anniversary year. From my point of view the use of the chainsaw fits perfectly with the music and the nature of Beethoven because the structures of the saw are both rough, untamed, stormy, and nevertheless of highest precision. When I start an all commissioned work, I try to get to know the person as well as possible, so I made a few short sketches of Beethoven. Understandably, it is not as bad to make mistakes with a pencil as it is with a chainsaw, because in the end, all I do with a chainsaw is the same with a pencil. It is just drawing. The first cuts of the Beethoven busts were very important. If they had been too deep or otherwise thoughtless, it would have affected all of the work afterwards. And then, layer by layer, the real work began. The representation of the ascents of Beethoven and the struggle for likeness. Beethoven was very fashion conscious most of his life, and especially at the beginning of his career, he wore short curly hair. Nevertheless, Beethoven's well-known picture is his later unkempt appearance with messy hair, a legendary lion's mane and a grim facial expression. Therefore, I worked and I'm still working on several Beethoven heads in the different phases of his life. I was inspired by many illustrations, especially the work of Antoine Bordel, who obsessively worked on a total of 80 Beethoven portraits during his lifetime. But two more works were decisively for me. On one side, the living mask that the sculptor Franz Klein cast for Beethoven. It is by far the most lifelike documentary evidence of Beethoven's real appearance. On the other hand, I orientated myself on the well-known picture of Josef Karl Stilo. Although the portrait is very idealizing, this painting shapes our image of Beethoven to this day. Very relevant to me is the fact that nobody in the world knows the true picture of Beethoven, but almost everyone can recognize him spontaneously. As a result, not only was Beethoven's appearance relevant to me, but I wanted to get as close as possible to the charisma, the real person of Beethoven. For several years, I have been working on reliefs that are carved in wood, also with a chainsaw. With the Beethoven series, I tried the first time to depict a real person in this way. These works are aiming more at the Beethoven's emotionality than at his actual appearance. Beethoven was a spirited, passionate person. He was restless, irritating, and yet sensitive. Add to this the agony of his life, his pain, his disappointed love, and above all the tragedy of his deafness. Nonetheless, he brought us a music that knows all the ups and downs of our human existence. 
and even the most unmusical person cannot be touched by this. Thank you so much for joining us for this very special Beethoven Express episode number one. First stop was from Milwaukee and San Francisco and we can't wait to share many more with you until Beethoven's 250th birthday on December 17th. And now we have a special greeting from my sisters in the beautiful Golden Gate Park. We wish you a safe and joyful holiday wherever you might be from our home to your homes. Hello from San Francisco, California. We want to wish you a safe and healthy holiday season. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving.